Hey guys, in this video I'm gonna talk about 12 forms of false Christianity that Satan likes to use to deceive new converts. And I'm making this video because I know how easily it is, especially when you're a new convert, when you first come to Christ, Satan likes to derail your walk and lead you down to uh, the false, these false doctrines he's created and ensnare you into them. And I wish uh, there were more videos out there when I first came to Christ and more information on which doctrines were false and which ones were true. So I decided to compile a, a list basically of the most uh, heretical and most damaging churches and false doctrines that are out there and, and the ones that most commonly deceive people. And, uh, you know, the Bible talks about uh, us not being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, you know, not being deceived by the craftiness of men by wicked men who have all these false doctrines. And there were points in, in the beginning of my walk where I was uh, deceived. But it, I wasn't deceived for longer than a week, maybe, by these false doctrines. And the first one I'm going to talk about is... The first false doctrine is... Uh, the worst doctrine that there is, it's the most heretical and the most damning, and this one should be obvious, guys, if you're truly born again and, and you truly love the Lord and you have His Holy Spirit. I don't see how anyone could be deceived into this, but I'm going to list it anyway. It is uh, greasy grace, the cheap grace, no repentance, uh, lawless gospel. And this false doctrine is the most damaging because it leads people to hell and most people can never get out of it and people will never get out of their sin in this doctrine. And I'm going to read a few verses here. Acts 8.22 Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. So right there, they're telling you, while well, Peter rebuked a sorcerer, and he said repent of his wickedness, clearly meaning turn from your wicked ways. And he's saying that, uh, he needs to do this so that the thought of his heart may be forgiven him. And you, we know that to enter into eternal life, we got to be forgiven by God. And he's saying here he needs to repent of his wickedness to be forgiven. So, and I'm going to read another verse, Romans 1.5, By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. And people like to quote Paul a lot that he taught you didn't have to repent. It was all about, you know, some false grace and he taught a lawless gospel. But here Paul is saying he received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith. And if we're saved by grace, the only reason he received his grace, he's saying, is for his obedience to the faith. So you uh, greasy gracers who like to say that their obedience isn't required, you're a liar and you're going to split hell wide open. And this doctrine is created because people fall into their sin and they can't get out so they make an excuse for their sin and they create a new doctrine basically saying they don't have to repent from their sins they don't have to turn from them and and this doctrine is the great falling away because i've seen 
most people that fall away from the faith adopt this false doctrine. And I'm warning you guys that since my time of being a Christian, uh, I haven't seen more people fall away to any other doctrine than this doctrine. So it's bringing uh, many people to hell. And God, I believe, hates this doctrine and he hates those who create this doctrine with a passion. And you guys better believe God does hate certain people. The scripture says he hates workers of iniquity. So it's clear right there, guys. And I truly believe that these people will be beaten with more stripes. They'll, they'll be beaten with way more stripes than somebody like Hitler or Stalin who didn't claim Christ. But because they claim Christ, they put them to an open shame, guys. So if you're a new convert and you've heard about this doctrine, about you're only saved by faith or by grace and you don't have to repent, you don't have to obey uh, Jesus Christ, stay far away from this doctrine, guys, because anyone telling you this doctrine is headed straight for hellfire. And you don't want to go along with them, guys. So it's it's definitely a perverting of the grace of God. And this doctrine basically spits on the cross of Christ. So stay far away from that, guys. And the second one I'm going to read here is dispensationalism. And this doctrine the majority of the time also goes hand in hand with no repentance and greasy grace. And this is also why they've removed uh, many books in the New Testament. Anything that Paul didn't write, if you're a Gentile, they say is not for you. You don't have to obey that. You only read and follow Paul's epistles. But they do this to try and remove repentance and to try and remove uh, obedience to Christ. And this is a lie straight from the pit of hell. And I'm going to read a verse here in Second Peter 3.15. And account that the long-suffering of our God is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him hath written unto you. So Peter right there is saying, is basically addressing a group of people that Paul has also addressed. So if the epistles and the gospels were written for different people, why are they addressing the same people here? That would contradict this doctrine. And another thing, Paul said that anyone who preaches another gospel, let them be accursed. And when you talk to a dispensationalist, they say, that there's different gospels for different people. So then who would who's a curse? Paul, Peter, Jesus? If they're all different gospels, which one is a curse? These people clearly clearly do not make any sense. And um, I'm gonna read another verse here. First Timothy six three, if any man teach otherwise and consent not to the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. So right there, Paul is is uh, saying that he's saying to the Gentiles and to everyone that we must also consent to Jesus's words or we are proud and we know nothing. So Paul right there is is basically telling us uh, that we also need to obey Jesus's words and you guys want to stay far away from these dispensationalists because they'll lead you down the wrong road as well, and you'll end up adopting this cheap grace gospel. 
And I'm gonna read a third one here, the Truther Movement, the Illuminati Idolaters. And this is one of the ones I was deceived into when I first began my walk. And to be honest, I believe this is one that a lot of people are deceived into. Because al although they expose Satan and what he's doing on this earth with the Illuminati and uh, the Masons and the celebrities, their focus and their heart is in the wrong area. They're, they're uh, deep into all this darkness and the things of Satan, but they're not edifying anybody. They're not bringing anyone closer to Christ. They're not t teaching people how to resist their sin, how to get set free from demons. It's only darkness, darkness. They'll only look at what the devil's doing. It's not, how can I improve my walk? How can I get cr closer to God? And it is good for people to see the truth. And uh, it has done its part in, in making people see that Satan is real, as it did with me. But once you see that, just drop it and move on. Because most of these people uh, get obsessed with it and many become delusional and they themselves get turned over to Satan. You see people start to lose touch with reality. Like uh, here recently, we have uh, people uh, denying that COVID is real and coronavirus is real and denying that people are getting sick, they start losing touch with reality and you want to get far away from uh, those people as possible because they, they pretend to be Christians but most of the time it's all about views for these people and you're basically entertaining yourself if that's all you're watching. Uh, just be honest with yourself. And whether you like to be honest or not, that's what you're doing is entertaining yourself with this garbage. And uh, I'm going to read a verse here. Revelation 2.24 But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Theatira, as many have not this doctrine, and have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. So, basically, this is what these people are into, the depths of Satan. They're into the depths of Satan, and that's all they know. And once you know the truth, guys, if you're a new convert, just... Turn the stuff off and go find an edifying channel, something that'll feed you meat. Because this stuff is only a distraction. And most of these people are in, all of these people are in born again, as a matter of fact. People who focus on all that stuff and that's all their ministry is, is, is uh, bringing up... Uh, so, supposed truth about the Illuminati and breaking news and all of that garbage. It's all, they're most likely not born again, guys, and you want to stay away from that stuff. And the fourth one I want to talk about is another one I was deceived into for maybe about a week when I first came to Christ, and that's the Hebrew Roots Movement. And these people are basically uh, Judaizers. They're Jew idolaters. They idolize Israel. They idolize uh, Ju Judaism. They want to be Jews. They want to talk and act like Jews and Hebrews. And guys, I was deceived into this for about a week. And the thing that got me was... Though they spoke about uh, obeying God and, and repentance and all this stuff, the Bible clearly says not to go back into the law of Moses or you're accursed. And for those greasy gracers, there are two different types of laws. And the laws I'm talking about are the Mosaic and Levitical laws. 
not to go back into. We are under the law of Christ in the New Testament, the law of the Holy Ghost. And we still need to obey that law because it's written in our hearts and those that are truly led by God will obey him because their law, his law is written on their hearts. The law I'm referring to is the Levitical and, and Mosaic laws for those greasy gracers who want to try and, and call all the laws the same thing. You're deceived by Satan. But you want to stay far away from this doctrine as well because uh, I'm going to read a scripture here. Galatians 3.10 For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse for it is written Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. And Romans 2.29 But he is a Jew which is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of God. And yes, guys, you want to stay far away from the, uh, this doctrine unless you want to go under a curse. Because the Bible says if you go under those Levitical and Mosaic laws, you're under a curse. The Old Testament was a shadow of things to come. It was a shadow of the New Testament. And guys, anyone's Jewish these days. Nobody knows what what uh, ethnic groups we have now. Everybody's mixed pretty much. I've done an Ancestry.com uh, test before. I had some Jewish. Does that mean I'm going to act like a Jew now? And... Uh, start uh, using Hebrew, even though that that was never my native language. No, it's not about race. It's not about ethnic group. It's about being a Jew inwardly. It's about being born again. It's about uh, receiving the Holy Ghost. And you're deceived if you're in this doctrine and you want to stay far away from these people. And that includes the black Hebrew Israelites. And these people are some of the worst. And if you can't see through that, then you need the Holy Spirit and you need to be born again. Because the black Hebrew Israelites are clearly racists and murderers and they're vile rapists. And if you listen to their uh, preaching, you can hear that in their in their voice and uh the fifth i'm gonna talk about is uh the identity teachers and these are basically prosperity and greasy grace uh teachers well they teach greasy grace and prosperity in a in a repackaged form to sound nice even though they sometimes speak of repentance they teach you that you've arrived and, and you're already good in Christ. All you have to do is, uh, it's pretty much no different than Greasy Grace. You just have your identity in Christ and you need to know what your identity is, even though they clearly don't tell you how to do that. You're just the new creation. Anybody that's in their, their congregation is born again. You're all a new creation. You just need to know your identity. You know, it doesn't matter if you masturbated that night or if you cursed or looked at porn or if you uh, s smoked some weed or something. You're still a child of God. You just need to know your identity. And this clearly creates more false converts than many other uh, doctrines. And they teach you you don't have demons in your flesh and you don't uh, have any, any sin nature in you. You're cleaned. You're completely good once you come to Christ. And uh, for this, I'm going to recommend you look at a, a channel that our church has up called SOCAR, S-O-C-A-R. And they get more in depth into exposing this false doctrine. But this is a quick, a fast-growing doctrine that 
is very uh, damning and the people that teach this are gonna split hell wide open and uh, basically they, they teach people to pray uh, and thank God the way, uh, the way the man that was headed to, tell, to hell uh, prayed and thanked God. They teach you to pray and thank God that you're righteous, that you pray uh, and fast and, and you're a good and righteous man. When the Bible teaches, when Jesus taught uh, to pray the opposite way, he taught to pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner and a, a wicked man. Please have mercy on me and deliver me. You know, they don't teach you to acknowledge uh, the sin or the demons that are in you so you can get free. They teach you to ignore that and to ignore conviction and to just uh, block all that off. And this is a very bad doctrine you want to stay away from. Anybody who says you need to know your identity in Christ, call them a false teacher and a child of Satan and run away. And, uh, yeah, guys, your identity is that if, you're, if you've repented and you obey God and you follow Jesus, then you're born again. If you're a willful sinner, then you're a child of the devil and you need to repent. These are the only two identities you can have. And, uh... Yes, yeah, stay far away from that church. If you don't want freedom from your sin or demons, then by all means, go to a identity church. And the sixth I'm going to read is uh, pretty obvious as well. Denominationalism. You know, this includes Jehovah's Witness, Seventh-day Adventists. Mormonism, uh, Roman Catholics, Baptists, Pentecostals, Methodists, Presbyterians. You want to stay away from these mainstream churches because uh, most of the times they're founded by false prophets and false teachers. And um, they baptize you into their church, into their denomination, and not into Christ. And... I'm not saying that all of these churches are, are uh, bad, you know, for example, there might be rare, it's a very, very rare chance that there's a, a good Baptist or Pentecostal church out there that at least preaches repentance and believes in the gifts and casts out demons, but it's a very rare, very rare, maybe one in a thousand chance that you find a church like that. And I've been to one of these Pentecostal churches and all they did was blabber in tongues and there was no interpreter, no order, people prophesying out of order and I left that church. The minute I walked in, I never came back again. And um, yeah, guys, most Baptists we know deny gifts anyway, and most Pentecostal churches are out of order. And uh, you want to avoid mainstream denominations and churches. And the seventh I'm going to read is uh, sinless perfectionism. Now, this doctrine, it does sound good, and it is true that we must repent and not continue in willful sin but the part these people miss is that they think they have no sin at all that they're completely perfect that they're uh, surpassed even uh, Paul the Apostle and, and they're on the same level as Jesus Christ and you want to stay far away from these people as well because when even though this doctrine sounds good, they ma many of these people are blind to their own sin. There's, they think that they're so perfect that they can't even see their own sin and there's no room for growth in them. And they think their flesh is clean and they think that, that uh, 
children are born sinless when they're clearly not. You know, the Bible says we were conceived in iniquity. And even as a early age, you can see the sin nature in children. You can see the selfishness, the me, 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 I want, the aggression in children, the anger. And that's clearly not the case. And yeah, guys, you want to stay away from sinless perfectionism because even this doctrine will lead people to hell because people are not being set free from their sin and their demons. They stay stagnant and they never grow and that you see the same sin in them their entire walk and most of them don't mature and you can see it in many of the street preachers that believe this doctrine. Many of them themselves are immature and very unloving and just you, you can see it in these people, guys, and who knows, most of them aren't even born again. And uh, the eighth one I'm going to read here is another obvious one. Well, it should be obvious if you're born again, and that is prosperity, word of faith, false miracle churches. Now, if you're into signs and wonders and into it's basically a curse from god for people who desire the kingdoms of this earth more than him he curses you into believing these false doctrines like this one and uh they teach you you know you can have it all you just name it and claim it kenneth copeland and uh who's the other one kenneth copeland and uh a lot of these other false teachers, Kenneth Hagen, Andrew Womack, all these people, they're all devils. And uh, yeah, guys, stay far away from this if you're a, a new convert and a babe in Christ. If you're truly called by God, we're going to have discernment to see right through this garbage, right through this covetous, money-loving garbage. And uh, Jesus never taught we're going to have it all and, and uh, prosper and, and have everything we need and want in this life. He said we're going to suffer for his name and we are called to suffer for his name. And this prosperity word of faith doctrine is, is basically contradictory to all that. And the ninth one I'm going to read here is the cessationists. And this false doctrine is the result of the previous doctrine. The prosperity, word of faith, false miracle churches. Basically, Satan likes to create a false doctrine out of another one. He likes to do extremes, one extreme to another so that people can get stuck in one if they're not stuck in the other. And this is what happens. Uh, people throw out the baby with the bathwater because they say, oh, prosperity, word of faith, false miracles are all bad, so let's just throw out all the gifts together. And this grieves God, and you have the cessationist movement who teach... Uh, Basically, that they're, the gifts aren't for today, they're all gone. You don't need to cast out demons or speak in tongues, and there is no power of God. And a lot of them do teach repentance, but many of them themselves are devils because they have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. From such, turn away, like the Bible says. So stay away from these people who deny the power of God. You got devils like John MacArthur who even uh, say that you can take the mark of the beast and still be saved. Why would you want to take doctrine from these people who can't even uh, rightly divide that, that if you take the mark, you'll be damned for eternity? And... Um, they like to use 1 Corinthians 13, 8 through 10. 
charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether they, there be knowledge, it shall vanish away, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. It's clear in the context of that chapter that Paul is telling us that love shouldn't be placed below the gifts. That, that we shouldn't esteem the gifts higher than love. And, when, and perfection uh, clearly comes during the resurrection. Perfection hasn't came yet. So, if they're using that to say all gifts have ceased, I don't see where perfection is yet. And these people are deceived by Satan. Um, you know, the majority of the people in that cessationist movement, they're dead in spirit because they have no Holy Ghost. They're not walking in, in the power of the Holy Ghost. They're not setting people free. It's all dead letter and dead law. And if you're going to a cessationist church and you're a babe in Christ and they deny the gifts, you might want to leave because they're coming against the scripture. They're coming against uh, the doctrine of Christ who told us we would do greater things in him we would cast out demons in his name and heal the sick and uh the tenth one i'm gonna talk about is prophetic focused ministries and this is a, a bad one it's growing and it's it's just garbage guys it's it's really bad today and you can guarantee any ministry that always talking about they have a word from the Lord or a dream from God or a vision or a prophecy and that's all it is you can guarantee it's a false ministry and you want to stay far away from it I'm gonna read uh, 1 Corinthians 14 26 how is it then brethren when you come together every one of you hath a psalm hath a doctrine Hath the tongue, hath the revelation, hath an interpretation, let all things be done unto edifying. Paul is asking the Corinthians here, how is it they always have a revelation? You know, how is it they always have a vision, a prophecy? He's telling them to let the, those things be done with edifying. And most of the time when people say they have a vision from God or a prophecy, it's never done to edifying. It never draws people closer to Christ or, you know, helps people to get out of their sin or, or how to uh, just get free from demons. It, it's always about what's going to happen in the future, a tsunami's going to happen, coronavirus is, is uh, a government psyop or China did it, or just all these different things, guys. They always talk about how uh, this event's gonna happen, this earthquake's gonna happen, this is, but it does nothing for no nobody. It doesn't edify anybody. Anyone can talk about it, and and uh, yeah, guys. My pastor did a uh, many good sermon on this already about uh, false prophecy and I'm gonna uh, put a link on the bottom to the SOCAR channel I mentioned and the false prophecy video I'm talking about and, and many of these people they just want fame and money and they want views on their YouTube channel or subscribers and this is why they they focus on these prophecies and just like the Illuminati and Truther false ministries, these basically, it's entertainment if you're watching it. You're not really watching it to be edified. And uh, no matter what you, you want to say, you're really watching it to entertain yourself. 
and the motive of these ministries is to make themselves the center of the ministry and not God. So if you're a brand new convert, you should stay far away from ministries that are always talking about prophecies from God, about visions and all that stuff. And don't get me wrong, there are true, there are prophecies, but we know that, um, we basically know that these prophecies aren't going to be a fruitless waste of time like most of them are. They're going to bring someone closer to Christ and they're going to tell them uh, something that that's going to edify them. Something that's going to bring them out of their sin. Something that that is going to br basically bring revelation of Jesus Christ to that person. Not, not just fruitless wastes of time bringing up the future or bringing up events we know that are going to happen in the in the Bible. And uh, that kind of prophecy was basically Old Testament prophecy, where they talked about future events. Anyway, I won't get too much into that one. I'm going to talk about the 11th uh, type of ministry to stay away from. That is... Uh, women who like to teach men and who like to teach the whole body women's ministries who target men and women stay away from these ministries especially those women who like to uh, be an authority over men and women you know it's not a woman's place to to be an authority over the whole body Paul clearly said, I suffer not a woman to teach or usurp authority over a man, but to be in silence. And if you're a man that likes to sit under a woman, you're effeminate, you're an Ahab, and you need to repent before you end up in hell. And if you're a woman that likes to teach men, you're a Jezebel and you need to repent. And uh, this isn't good, guys. This isn't how God designed it. Men and women have different ministries. Men were meant to be leaders over the body. Women were meant to only teach women and edify uh, the body. But they weren't meant to be leaders and teach men. They can encourage men. They can encourage their husbands. They can encourage but they aren't meant to teach men and be an authority over them. And, uh, yeah, guys, you want to stay far away from those, those ministries because they're not called to be authorities. They're called to have a meek and quiet spirit. You know, I'll give my wife as an example and, and the other women in this ministry. They don't go around teaching men. Their videos are clearly uh, directed towards women. Their ministries are clearly geared towards women, not towards other men, you know. And they're also uh, meant to teach children as well. So it's only women as children. So... The fact that women want to be a street preacher or want to have this this authority over men, something is wrong and they need to be delivered of a, a Jezebel spirit. Stay away from them, especially if you're a man. And the last, uh, the last false ministry I'm going to talk about is a vain healing ministry. And these are ministers that like to go up to people and anybody. They like to go up to anyone, even unsaved, unrepentant, willful sinners who don't want God. And they like to try and heal them, even though Jesus never did this. And they don't do real healings. They just film everything as, a, as if it's a legitimate healing. For example, they'll tell ask people if they have a pain uh, and what's their pain on a scale of 1 through 10 
And guys, this isn't legit. Let's see them go up and heal cancer or tumors or organ damage or diseases or... And I'm not coming against healing in general because I believe people are healed as well. I believe in that gift. The problem is when they want to go and, and try and heal all these things and make it like everyone's healed and then they... They hurt people's faith when they're not healed. <coughs> and they also create uh, other fruitless ministries that want to do the same thing. And this is a big problem, guys. And another example of, of something fruitless they do is they, they grow out limbs. When they claim somebody has a longer leg or longer arm and they try to uh, grow it out and make it like it's some great miracle, Jesus didn't do these things. Neither did the apostles. They healed actual, uh, you know, actual people that were crippled, people that were blind, people that had serious life-threatening infirmities they healed. And the majority of these ministers do it to put on a show and for views and for fame and for subscribers and you can see it and you, their motive is clear guys and I wanted to do this video basically to help especially the new converts stay away from these ministries. And uh, if you have any questions on which ministries are false, which ones are legitimate, if you have any questions on what ministries you should follow, and uh, which churches you should stay away from, if there's any I, I didn't address in this video, you can contact me, you can send a comment or an email, and... Uh, I'd be more than happy to help you out. And uh, yeah, guys, these are definitely some churches and ministries that you want to stay far away from. I pray you guys have a blessed day and I'll talk to you later.